Welcome everybody to Media Training 101, how to talk to the press in one-on-one -on -one meetings. And I'm so glad you're here today because we're gonna get into what to do before your press meeting, during your press meeting, afterward, and a special quick look at how to do video interviews. And so today I'm here with my excellent colleagues, uh, Bob Decker. Hey, Bob. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Happy to be here, good to see you. And Netra Ghosh, hey Netra. Hi, hi everyone, glad to be here. Hi, Cindy, thanks uh -huh. for organizing this. Ah, so glad you're here. All right, we're gonna take one moment of housekeeping to just show you quickly um, how this is gonna work. And then afterward, um, we're going to have time to ask tons of questions and stuff. We are gonna do our best to keep this to 20-ish minutes because everybody's slammed right now. And afterward, you'll be able to um, go into one of the meetings. You can see on the side here, you'll be able to go see Bob. He's going to do a Cision demo. So if you'd like to see how Cision works and how it can benefit you, I'm going to do a segment on uh, video interviews. Fallon, will you snag Bill Robertson and Carol Elms out of the video interview room? If you have a sec, that would be amazing. Uh, just uh, maybe they want to be there, but if they want to join us <laughs> and then uh, for everybody afterward, you can also go see Natra. She's going to be talking about media briefing best practices. And when I mean talking, we're all going to have a conversation so you can talk with everybody in there. This is meant to be a conversation. So you'll be able to just come back. I'll show you this at the end to do this URL and get right back to uh, that area, live area where you can meet up with everybody. Sound good? Good, good. All right. So we're going to look today at key steps uh, to take as you prep for your interview and what you want to make sure happens during your meeting, how to follow up and how to keep your brand's presence strong. And again, a quick look at video interviews. So Bob, I wanted to ask you, you are all about the prep and you said it's so important to prep for those press meetings. Tell me all about it. Yeah, I, I think there are a couple of things that are uh, really important, but let me just mention also that um, if you um, if your company doesn't have a communications policy, um, before you start doing press meetings, it's a good idea to have one, and um, we can help you with that if you if if you need one. Um, aside from that, I think the there are two things. the The most important is uh, first well, most important one is to establish the goal of the meeting. What do you want to accomplish? What kind of coverage would you like to get? Um, and the way, you know, once you have that in mind, then I think the most practical thing that works for me is to go and go ahead and create a slide deck with your um, bullet points on it, your talking points. You may, you may not actually need it in the meeting, but it will just help you to organize your thoughts and it'll give you something that you can share with your um, internal team, with your agency team, and um, you know, see if you're, you're covering everything. You need to keep in mind with, especially with the kind of interviews you're gonna have at um, NAB, that you need to lead the conversation. Um, editors are normally not going to come prepared with questions for you, so you've kind of got to control the agenda. Um, you're not gonna start off the meeting by saying, what would you like to know? You're going to instead say, you know, here's what I would like you to take away. Um, so that's that's point number one. Point number two, it's really important to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. The thing that editors like the least is that you get into a meeting with them without knowing what their publication is or what their interests are. And so in advance, um, you know, you want to understand what the magazine covers, who its audience is, what kind of stories they run. Maybe they don't run new product stories. They only run kind of high level industry news. And so you want to skew your message to um, suit what, what the magazine covers. And then you also wanna know what that particular editor is interested in. Um, and so you can adapt your story to the publication and the editor. And of course, you know, if it's a, if it's a publication from Germany or France, you wanna give your story the German and, or French angle. Um, and a really useful thing also is to find out what the editor has written about your company before. 
Because it's it's super embarrassing to be in a meeting and, and an editor says, you know, you remember that story I wrote about your company six months ago and you don't know what they're talking about. So true, so true. And I have definitely met with editors where they're just like, okay, I don't want to hear about this. I actually had someone tell me that one time. I don't want to hear about this. I'm like, okay, what do you want to hear about? <laughs> um, but how do you find out uh, what they're interested in? How do I even do that? Well, it's it can be very simple. I mean, you can go to the magazine's website. You can do a Google search on the name of the editor. Um, and, you know, another way is to have a subscription to a service like Decision, which has a database of all the editors and what they're interested in. And I'll actually be doing a, a demo of that after after this main session. So you can see how easy it is to, to figure out who you're talking to. Now, Bob, you talked about doing a PowerPoint and Netra, I wanted to throw to you because you are all about during the meeting and best practices. Can I ask you about that piece? Absolutely. And um, the first thing that I would like to say is that in order to be a great spokesperson, you need to be a good listener. So preparation is key, yes. But also, you know, when you're speaking to the press, actually in person, it's very important to understand what they're asking you, you know, um, because you can be most effective in a press meeting when you provide them the information they're actually looking for. So if it's, say, a journalist that's putting together a quick NEB story on what's new in the show, you don't want to bog them down with information on your, you know, your sales growth for the quarter or, you know, your, um, your innovation, you know, you just want to give them a quick overview of what you're showcasing at the show, you know, just top three products, and, and that's it. And um, along with it, what's important is that you need to be relevant, you need to be succinct, and um, most important, you cannot lose track of your story. If you're speaking with the press, it's likely that your company has a story to tell. You know, that's why you are talking to them. So it's extremely critical to keep track of that story because that, that is the story that distinguishes you from your competition and well, makes you you. So um, try and bring your conversation, even when you're talking about a trend or a product, whatever it is, back to that story. So stay on message. And as Bob um, mentioned, you know, preparation is key. So even when you're preparing for that press meeting, make a quick list of the top three messages that you want to, you know, tell the press and just stick to that. Um, it also matters how you tell your story. So if you can bring in four elements, facts, figures, um, customer names, and um, stats, you know, and um, graphs and charts, that's gonna be incredible. The press is gonna worship you because those are the things that's gonna really set you apart from um, others that are just speaking to the press. So those are important. And um, I would say that Every meeting with a press member is an opportunity to build a relationship because if you can provide them with information they're looking for, and if you can nurture that relationship by being friendly and approachable, they're going to come back to you over and over again. They, they're going to trust you as um, a valid resource. So um, I would say, you know, just make sure that whatever time you have, it could be just five minutes or it could be, you know, you're sitting down for 30 minutes make the best of it. Um, talking about you know, in-person meetings, which many of you will be doing at NAB, there's also an increasing um, rate of video interviews in our industry, of course, because of the COVID pandemic. And um, we have seen in the past years, we've done a, a lot of video interviews um, with, with our clients and the press. Um, and um, Cindy, you're here to talk about that. So maybe you know, give us a few pointers on that. Yes, I certainly want to do that. So looking at video interviews, who here, this is an interactive session here, who here has done video interviews, gonna do interviews, afraid someone's gonna walk in with the camera and ask you to do an interview? I have been known to do it occasionally. 
<laughs> Anybody else? If nobody else yeah. would talk about <laughs> I've Yeah, I've done a few weeks, Patrick. Yeah. Okay. Okay, handful of us, handful of us. Um, so I'm gonna just talk about a couple things that I messed up on video interviews and things to do better. But first, I just want to mention that um, Netra and Bob have a checklist for meeting with the press and uh, just check the chat right now. We're gonna put that checklist in there for you. And then I also have one for you uh, in a minute on doing video interviews as well. So I have that uh, checklist for you. So, all right. So I definitely uh, can remember standing in the booth at NAB and someone coming in with the camera and me feeling like, well, I've got my thumb drive and my stuff I printed out, I'm going to give them. And then they're like, hey, can you just talk to me about it uh, and tell me um, what's new? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I my heart just like dumped into my stomach. And even though I'd written the stuff up and I knew the, the points and everything, could I talk about it and even remember the product name and the latest standard that the product complied to and all that stuff? No, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't tell you that because zero people remember it other than me. But I, I was like, I vowed never to let that happen again, you know. And so I kind of came up with a plan after that on how to get through video interviews and actually start to like it uh, later. And so I just wanted to run through a couple things with you. First thing, as soon as they come in, um, you can ask them, um, are you going to uh, interview me? Are you going to be on with me? Or are you going to uh, just have me talk into the camera? So just ask him, is there going to be someone interviewing me? Or am I just by myself? Um, do I look into the camera? Or, especially if you're new, can I look off camera? So if you can have a friend, someone you like standing over there, it's hard to do it with an imaginary person, but it's possible. If you can have someone also don't pick a, one of your like jokester buddies from the peanut gallery who's going to try to crack you up and mess you up during the interview, because uh, mistake, I picked the wrong person one time for that. And they're like busy, like doing the craziest stuff, trying to make me mess up, which they succeeded in. So pick a friend, have them stand there and talk to them. There's so many interviews that you see where someone's talking off camera and it's way easier than looking in the camera, which can be super jarring, especially when you're first doing it. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm so used to demoing this product, but I get feedback. I know this product, I can set it up, I can sell it, I can do everything. But now to talk uh, with someone about it to a little lens, freaky. So know that part, memorize your open and your close. And I just mean like a one sentence thing. Your one sentence thing might sound like, hey, if you do live production and you care about test and measurement, new this year is, so you could do that. Hey, if you're a floor manager at Amazon or a big warehouse and you need robots because you don't have enough staff. So something that says who you're for and what you solve in that first moment. And even if you're talking with an editor, um, I find this works as well because I can say, so for chief engineers who are doing OTT, we have this new thing. So it tells who you're for and what you solve. So that would be the second thing to do. Then uh, also, like Natra said, have your two or three key points. You guys, I write it on my hand. I know that sounds <laughs> insane, but <laughs> it totally works. So I just have one word, you know, maybe it's like 2110 AI, I don't know, whatever the things are. <laughs> written on my hand, <laughs> then at least if I'm desperate for a moment, I can look down and you've already asked the camera crew, can I do pickups? Can I do pickups means when I mess up, if I mess up, can I stop and pause and start again? Most camera crews will be like, oh yeah, you can do pickups, but let just pause for a sec so that they've got an edit point, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, Similar to what Natra and Bob both said, know what you want to have happen at the end of this video interview. What are you hoping will happen next? Um, for a video, you're also going to be probably speaking to your end customers, your prospects, not just the um, editors, but it's similar information. And at the end, um, 
just, it doesn't need to be a hard sell, but give them an easy next step. So I'll give you an example right now. Text the word interview to me right now to get my checklist, 530-203-5703. Text the word interview to me to get my checklist. We'll also put the link for you in the, in the chat. I already put it in so you can pick it up that way. But if you want to have the experience of what that's like, or it can be as simple as, hey, go to our website on this page, or here's a bit.ly link, or whatever the thing is, give them an easy way to get more info and work with you. So those are my sort of top things to do on video. I can see someone already texted in just now. So to summarize some things so far, uh, Bob clearly talked about knowing uh, what your editor is interested in and what your goal is. So that's super important. Nedra talked about knowing your message and sticking to it, building that relationship with the editor, having your facts and figures available. If they love that kind of thing, then yeah. Um, and then I just gave you a bunch on video and you can pick up the checklist from me. Um, I, I have to tell you about one uh, video, uh, one editor that we had in from one of the video magazines. We actually brought him into our factory and I was thinking like, what would he be interested in? And so we had him sit with one of the software engineers uh, for an hour and watch uh, coding and uh, they loved it. And so just finding out what they're interested in, what they care about, like after that, getting meetings with that person was like so easy. And it was just because we thought about what do they like? What would they care about? Yeah. And you can just ask them. You know, that's <laughs> the thing. In, the, in a meeting, you could say, you know, uh, you could say, you know, you can kind of give an outline of what you're going to talk about and say, is that interesting for you? And if it's not, then say, you know, well, what would be interesting for you? Um, you know, Cindy, I think, you know, a lot of people go to, to um, like shows like NAB and they'd like to have some video of, you know, what they're doing, but, you know, they don't have a camera crew of their own. They don't have, you know, somebody to do it for them. You know, what do you, what do, you do if you're in that situation? Certainly you can have your agency, if you're working with an agency, come in and do videos for you. Um, all the agencies do that kind of thing. We definitely do that with our clients. And then we also leveled up a little bit this year and we partnered up with Kit Plus and they're just so awesome to work with. So we have our Kokoro Kit Plus NAV uh, marketing package. I know some of you on here are actually participating in that. And so that's a great way you, um, you pay some money to have the crew come in, do a totally professional shoot. And then in this case, we write up some awesome content that can be used for marketing automation and other stuff afterward. So there's always cool pay to play options. Um, there can be free options too. If you're doing ads with somebody, I always used to say they'd be like, can you buy more ads? I'm like, yes. And can I get an interview with <laughs> one of the editors at the next show. And I might say, yes, and can I get a video interview, that kind of thing. So you can uh, work it that way as well. Um, IABM, I think, does video interviews. I I think there's a ton of organizations that, that do post perspectives. I was just gonna, yeah, I was just gonna say that, that there are industry organizations if you're a member of, like IABM, yeah. for example, they will do those video interviews for you at the show. Yeah, yeah. So just come to your booth, get all the content you need definitely worth exploring so what questions do people I just, have bob did you have sure follow-up yeah just a, just a little bit cindy you know i mean after you go to all the work to get the press interviews done you want to be sure to you know wait and see what kind of coverage you get and then you know, a great thing to do is amplify the coverage that you get from, from the magazines on your social media channels. And if you've got a newsletter, you can also mention it there. Um, and, um, you know, it's also not a bad idea just to, you know, send a personal note, email back to the editor and just say, thank you for doing the interview and, or, or have your agency do it. And, um, you know, just thank you them for their time and ask them if there's any other information that they'd like particularly absolutely if you haven't right. seen any coverage yet. That might yeah, remind them that they need right. to write the story. Yes, agreed, Bob. I mean, that's another great way to build that relationship that we were talking about, you know, just that back and forth. That's, that's kind of critical. I love that. So did everybody pick up the freebies that we put forth for you? And that we've got PDFs and we listed the links in there. You can catch us in the uh, meeting, the meeting room breakout rooms afterward as well. This is an open session. Does anybody want to jump on and ask a question here before we move off to the meeting?
meeting rooms and we can talk further. Anybody at all, you're welcome. Kevin? No, I mean, I'd, I'd say that you said the bit about doing the pause and doing that. One of the things I've obviously working in the TV industry, some of them actually don't mind you actually doing a countdown of five, four, three, and then going. To, so they've also then got it on the audio timeline. They can see that when they come to the edit that you're about to. Just a little trick, you know, I do with some of them. Definitely. Right. So good. So good. I'll see a lot of people. Um, Kevin will be editing videos and somebody will grab their ear or like do a weird thing right when they start talking <laughs> we have to grab a still frame and then do a little what we can to make that work and stuff so what you said about that kevin is spot on i mean the, the other one you said as well looking off camera while you're talking i mean it's it's a difficult thing act to struggle with that when you then suddenly look down the lens and bang maybe get your bullet point straight down the lens to the person watching is another another trick, you know, that sort of taking it in and then suddenly, hold on, this is for me. <laughs> He's talking pro to tip me. there. This is pro tip stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have actually done that. One of the trade shows, we put down the the three messaging points on, on a piece of paper and I was standing right there, you know, right where the camera <laughs> was like, you know, I'm short. They're just like standing there. And the person's just speaking to the camera. I was actually looking at the at the, the messages and speaking to the camera, just as a as kind of a reminder, it worked. Yeah. So good. And the final thing I'd say is speak slowly. Because in your mind, you think people understand what you're saying, but actually you could be speaking at a hundred miles an hour. And especially if the person you're, or the audience you're speaking to, English isn't their first language. It may sound obvious. I mean, I'm, I'm doing it now and I'm slowing down. I feel awkward, but hopefully it sounds quite, quite natural and it's getting the message across. So, so true. I just did a like a LinkedIn live right before this to remind people to jump on and I felt myself talking way too fast, Kevin. <laughs> so. It's so easy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, well, that was too fast. <laughs> it's done now. <laughs> but you're totally right. <laughs> Anybody else want to jump in? All right, I'm going to share the screen and just mention to you what we are doing next. We kept it to 20 ish minutes. So thank you. And for those of you who want to talk further and dig in more, if you go up to the upper left, let me just pop this. Um, actually could Fallon, Becca, could one of you just pop this URL back into the chat for everybody, if you don't mind. Um, and then when you go here, you'll see on the upper left is map. Um, thank you, Karen, for pointing that out. Um, if you need to expand or contract your screen to see that map or scroll on here, um, that'll help you get to the map. And so then you could choose uh, if you want to talk with Bob and see what Cision's all about. If you want to talk with Metra, Netra about media briefing best practices, um, want to talk with me about video interviews or just talk with any of us, just jump on in. And then we also have, if you want to know more about the platform, uh, come on in and see, uh, talk with folks about live. If you just want to chat and have a virtual coffee, all good all good and you can see sort of on the side is another way to navigate as well and so i am going to go to the cindy room right now so i will see you all there and bob and netra any final words any closing just thanks everybody for being here and i'll see you in the decision room if you have any questions about decision or anything else and for me um don't be scared of the press they are people too they're not going to eat you they're your friends. They're our friends. Let's treat them that way.